So hold hands over and hold hands and in the picture. If that measure or count is in its double digits. But if it is given in a single digit as a measure or a count, say one or two or three and so forth, this means a ruler, but not a ruler over rulers. Again, we repeat, if this figure of speech of numbers appears in scriptures as in double digit or measures of items or count of items, these symbolic numbers in this format mean rulers over rulers. Yet still, these double measures or counts they mean rulers over rulers only when they are not direct multiples of 10. If they are not given as 11, 12, 13, but given as 10, 20, 30, that means the 10s, 20, 30, they are not rulers over rulers. Even though these direct multiples of 10 and 20 and 30 also signify rulers, but these multiples of 10, they don't show that these are rulers over rulers, but they show that these are rulers in terms of other elements, but not rulers over rulers. So I hope you get the difference, but you will see it as we explain this figure of speech along the way. So when these numbers appear in scriptures, given in counts of two numbers, say a 12, 25, 35, and so forth, of which category of format is this 14th, then it means this number combining two digits signifies a ruler and another ruler in the context. And that's the point of this 14th of the Passover, to signify two kinds of rulers in the picture, in that one is higher than the other. And this is how this figure of numbers is employed to specify things about rulers signified by context of sacred structures or days of observance or in council of offerings, besides other numerous cases concerning sacred rituals, rituals which involved counting or measures. They signify elements or specifics of nature or influence about rulers. So the higher ruler in these double digits, when these digits are not direct multiples of 10, the higher ruler is given as the first part of that measure. In this case, the higher ruler is given as a one in this 14th day of the Passover. But the ruler or the lesser ruler in this figure of 14, that lesser ruler is given by the second number. Themselves are rulers. That is how this figure of speech appears or is used in scriptures. So the lesser ones are given as the second number in this digit. Whether it's a count or a measure, it's the same. The first number means higher ruler, the second number means a lesser one. This is how the number 14 was used to signify realities about Jesus and he is elect. This is how this figure works in the Bible and how it appears in scriptures, here in the laws and in many other parts of scriptures. For example, here in the laws and in the book of Ezekiel, another part where you may have seen this, these numbers given as figures of speech. So besides this, Format, there is also the format of fractions, as you see in meat offerings and drink offerings given in portions. For example, a tenth or two tenths and a fourth, all these mean specifics about rulers, but two rulers being in the picture. If two numbers appear in the context of these measures or counts, whether fractions or counts, this is how this figure of speech is employed to specify specifics of rulers of God's creation. We cannot run wide respecting this one of fractions because we have a long way to go. So assure me now you have got the bare basics of how this figure of numbers is used. Therefore, it is because of this format that in the symbolism of the Passover day being the 14th day, or the number 14, the number one in that 14th refer to a very high one in the symbolism of one. And the second number signifies the lesser ruler. And these are specified as princes because of the use of that number four. And this is how these figures of numbers are used. And therefore in that figure or that number one, there is a reference to a very high ruler of a God's creation because rulers in the class signified by the number one 
and very high rulers of our God's creation. That's the reason small measures appear in the most holy, or their fractions. And you know who dwells in the most holy. Therefore, those who are near him are also high because they are near the, the, the living God. This symbol of one we saw already to mean very high rulers. So check out our earlier teaching because I cannot dwell on it anymore. But it is well known, at least in Christianity, that the Passover is about Messiah and is elect. It therefore becomes clear how the 14th day means realities about Jesus' day in the earth. And therefore his elect coming into existence because of him. Their ultimate circumstances are what is foretold by Psalm 45 verse 16, which will have dwelt on a good while already. Because of these very realities about Jesus' his followers, but starting in Israel, of course, that's why God said in Psalm 82, I have said you are good. Because classes of rulers that are near God are called good. Again, that Psalm says God stands in the midst of good, translated mighty, and that he judges among the good. So the word translated mighty was a singular representation of these called gods, even as man is called Adam or man, even though they have their plural reference. In the very psalm that calls God's people as gods, in God's unique way of calling things that are not as though they are. That's why you see at the end of that psalm, he mentions the title of prince, which these are, respecting another ruler whom we all know, called the ruler over all this world. So that reference there is to this prince over the world called the prince who fell to imply swerving from God's way. Even as Jesus Christ pointed that, uh, that folly, saying that he abode not in the truth in God's ways in John chapter 8 verse 44. So realities about this class of rulers called princes are what is linked to this figure of number 4 by this structure of this 14th day. So by this structure of the Passover falling on the 14th day, the Passover which signifies things we already know, starting with Messiah's coming in the world, it becomes clear why the Lamb was chosen on the 10th day, but on the 14th put to death. To explain a little concerning the 10th, why the Lamb was chosen on the 10th, again in the context of this figure of speech of light, the tenth signified Jesus Christ already in Israel, Israel as a chosen plant of righteousness. These realities later also amplified by the prophet. So the tenth thing because there was no son of God formed by him among them because the spirit of God who makes sons was not yet given, according to John chapter 1 verse 12. But Christ was among them. Christ be in his rock form according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Christ be among them was signified by the number 1 in that tenth. Therefore that day of his being among them in a rock form as the Gospels teach of which is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That rock form was simply signified by the tenth day. So read your Bible to understand what a rock meant to Israel. And therefore, because blue also means a prince, things we cannot go into at this moment. You can read why that blue of all things in the most holy, the blue that covers the ark was not covered. It was seen by all people. Whereas the blue that covered other items in the most holy was all covered. Messiah is a prince and a rock and is said to be in the most holy. And those who are quick and of interest in these things can go study or about this kernel of blue, why this kernel of blue means princehood, and why it was covered, the only color covering things in the most holy that was not covered, it was visible to all. Now, Jesus Christ uttered most of these realities concerning his being in Israel, most of which teachings at times nearly got him stoned, but that respecting why his followers are higher than John is one of the highlights to refer to what his followers become. Realities about the high stature of his followers say of all that are born of women, none is higher than John. 
but that those in the kingdom who are higher than John, saying this fully aware of the kind of honor due to Abraham. Abraham, because of whom Israel was a reality, mentioning these are higher, fully aware of the kind of honor due to Moses, and so forth. It is because what he spoke concerned might and the might of rulers over God's creations. Rulers among whom none was a son of man, save himself. All the way from the wilderness, even at the time of speaking or teaching these things in Israel, he was the only son of man in the category of rulers set over God's creation. So it was not about honor, and that's why also he said, a son of man who is in heaven, whereas he's still in flesh. These were realities concerning rulers set over God's creation, among whom he is. But about influence because of their class of creation. So when he said that none of sons of men born among women is higher than John, knowing how Abraham is held in esteem among other prophets, it was because of influence of this class of creation. He came into the earth to form, called princes. That's the point of Israel being called a royal priesthood, things which even Revelation affirms. Now his followers shall be in honor, yes, which honor, no doubt, the fathers had before God. But that doesn't equate to might. Therefore, here it wasn't the point when he said that of all that are born of women, none is higher than John. Since he predicates this high distinction of the elect upon the kingdom, because there are many who are honored and not mighty before God, and vice versa. So the mighty are the meaning of the number four in the 14th day of the Passover. Respecting the implication of the purpose of choosing the lamb on the 10th day and keeping it till the 14th day, God spoke of Israel as being invited, invited not being of any service to him, whether righteous or not. Now, this was a figure he spoke in the context of a house or a building. Because you see, he brings in the idea of building. So the figure of a house, which building is respective of, in the context of the creator, it ultimately means his kingdom. And this kingdom consists in priests and princes and other powers unknown to us. Which house are the princes signified by the number four? So these are all his house. For an example, the house in Isaiah chapter 22 verse 24. But in figures, some rulers are times called house of cedar and of all kinds of trees, or even a house of vessels, as we see in Isaiah again. So he meant matters of the kingdom. Therefore, because no one builds a house using vines or vine branches, much less a broken vine or a burnt vine, but people build houses using tough logs of trees, whereby you see the favorite of all in scriptures is called cedars, among other trees. Therefore, God says in Ezekiel chapter 15, verse 5, when Israel has a vine and righteous before him, they were whole, but they were not good for any use in these matters of the kingdom. How much more when they were wicked, which is signified as a vine being burnt up, because being burnt up signifies to become wicked. You can read that symbolism of being burned up to meet wickedness in Isaiah. This is the idea also concerning all those born of women in Israel, let alone elsewhere, being far beneath John the Baptist, and yet himself was beneath the elect who are in the kingdom, who are Jesus' elect. This their station of being without service in these matters of building, which building is respective of his kingdom, is the point of the tenth day of choosing a lamb, because the rock Christ was among them, who is signified by the number one, or represented by the number one, because it doesn't signify him, but it represents he in the picture. But themselves, the Israelites, had no measure, which signifies classes of influence in the kingdom, among Christians of God, with innate influence in themselves. And so their circumstances as a righteous nation, and Christ the rock among them was signified by number 10. 
So they were signified by the number 10 of choosing the lamb on the 10th day as a plant of righteousness. But the 14th after the 10th day meant the day of the elect who are also represented by number 4 and who are also by the same Christ because Israel was kept by Christ. So are the followers of Jesus Christ also kept by Christ. Now this reality of the elect coming after other righteous people have been on the scene already is spoken of someone by Enoch, but we can't go into details. But there Enoch speaks of choosing the elect from among the righteous and the only righteous on the scene according or before God were Israel, the nation. So the number four in that Passover day made the elect of Jesus Christ. It highlights a particular class concerning might because the other numbers which highlight classes of God creation but not respect for might because God speaks of things that are not as though they are. We have to highlight this aspect. That's why they were represented as being mighty in the day when they were only being formed. The day known for their coming into formation even according to the Gospels. The elect of Jesus Christ was signified by the second part of the 14th. This now should be clear because this is the format that this figure takes in scriptures to specify these aspects concerning rulers over God's creation. So the prince over princes, whom we all know as the son of God, and being the reason for that Passover, he was represented by that number one in the 10th and in the 14th of the first month. And our similar structures of other dates in other months have other qualifications, but they essentially reflect the same things that this 14th day of the Passover also represents in that these other formats whereby you see another number instead of one or four they also represent these aspects of two rulers being in the context the higher one represented by the first figure and the lesser one represented by the next but this one of the 14th essentially means Jesus Christ and his elect and therefore this is the use of this figure essentially in all dates or observates and the counts in the laws of Moses. Now Messiah is God but scripture also calls him a prince, a prince of princes. That's why he's called the firstborn of all his creation or the king of kings of all the earth or lord of lords. These are all titles which mean that he is a prince or he is a ruler of our rulers. Now since he is called a prince and this part one refers to him. Then of those signified by the number one, some are called princes. Though this figure of one is not always the case that it refers to those called princes. No, in scriptures, it means very high words. They are signified by the number one. While for the most part, princes are signified by the number four. Because this figure means or concerns might. Even though there are those who are created on the fourth day called stars, as you can read in Genesis, when it says he made the stars also. So for certain classes of rulers over God's creation, they are those anointed with specific might called princes, as we see in Daniel, whereby that these fighting for territory or dominion, they come in figures of rams and goats, but later called princes. But the dragons who are called fishes and ships in other parts of scripture, for example, Psalms, they also have rulers among them called dragon heads, but also called princes. For an, an example in Ezekiel, called princes of the sea, the sea which is their realm, where they come from as rulers of God's creation. So the princes among these called dragons, they are the princes of the sea with thrones, also sons of men, get to have their rulers in this class called princes as foretold in Psalm 45 verse 16. And these come by the agents of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is again in the picture where high rulers for God are mentioned in figures of numbers. It is the same idea in the measure of 144 cubits of the world in Revelation whereby the highest ruler is represented by the number one and the lesser rulers are represented by numbers that follow in that figure. 
double force here indicate mighty ones who are themselves rulers over mighty ones because of the structure of this symbolic number. That is how this symbol appearing in double digits or more is used to specify aspects of dominion or aspects of rulers over God's creation, including this very number of 144 or even the 14th, just as we saw of the 14th. So you can see that the wall looks jasper as the gold who sits on the throne also looks jasper. That jasper appearance or colors of gemstones generally also signify specific traits to rulers they represent. Character traits which are esteemed for God in rulers over his creation, but the rulers given in figures of gemstones. And that is why the ephod was all of gemstones, each given the name of a son of Jacob. And many places where you've seen where gemstones are given names of tribes of Israel, it refers to unique character traits of rulers in the millennia, or even those who are past. Where you read these gemstones, it means rulers. So the world that looks jasper as God that sits on the throne looks jasper, means they also have this singular trait signified as jasper in themselves being rulers. So they have it even as the God who sits on the throne has this character trait signified by Jasper. Even as you see that character trait portrayed on the first foundation because of the meaning of the number one or the place or position of coming first. That's why Jasper again appears on the first foundation because of the symbolism of the number one or coming first. No detail in prophecy is redundant or superfluous. That is the implication also of this number four as a symbol in that 144 to mean princes. A war signifies a class of rulers over realms. For an example, we have Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 44, where that wall of Babylon is said to fall and old nations stopping to flow unto it. These verses meant Babylon would cease to be a super power or the wall of Zion that God purposed to destroy in Lamentation chapter 2 verse 8. It made unpleasant times in respect of judgments upon the rulers of Israel. So these judgments overtake all the nation because of these rulers. This is the same meaning of this wall measuring 144 units or cubits to signify rulers in circumstances of their millennial rule. That's why this figure of four or its multiples appears in many arbitrary contexts concerning glorified Israel, starting with this world known 144 cubits of the world, said to be the size of a man who is an angel. And you know, when one born of women is said to be an angel, it means a specific time in the history of man when they shall be glorified, as Jesus himself indicated, or even as Psalm 45 says, things are identical to what this revelation foretells in these measures or cult, it respects might concerning the elect of Jesus Christ, called princes and sound kings or priests over the earth, when in respect of other elements of dominion over God's creation. They are the angels whose is the measure of that 144, which figure means the same things that the Passover de depicted. Besides well-known preliminary stages, they would go through to this ultimate picture of becoming a prince, signified by the number four. So it is granted that the 14th also represents things which are preliminary and which the followers of Jesus Christ have to go through before they attain to this stature of princehood. The laws were prophecies of progressive millennial events, starting with Israel the nation as a servant of God by whom God ultimately would accomplish these realities concerning creations called princes from among sons of men and other beings but in other stations of influence. And yet Israel itself had no measure of what things God implies in Ezekiel chapter 15 verse 5. But the prince was among them. That is the point of the blue on the ark being visible, not covered, Whereas all the blue that covered other items in the Most Holy was covered. We cannot go into details, but the wise can read on to understand more concerning what was commanded when the 
tabernacle was to be moved from one place to another. Prophecies depicted by the laws had to progress into circumstances of Jesus' followers and then on to other creations of God, where Israel, the nation, occupied the 10th, Christ's followers occupied the 14th, and then the creature to be delivered, even according to the Gospels, delivered into the liberty of the children of God, the first category occupied the 10th or the 7th month, and then the second category occupying the 15th day of the 7th month, beside the beginnings of the month. All these offerings in the beginnings of the month and the Sabbath, all these pointed to rulers over God's creation coming in the millennia. Little by little, but they all will be manifest as all these days signified, starting with that of the 14th. But the day of Jesus is coming into the world and manifesting to the world, that is the Passover to form other princes like him. And these in the laws are also depicted as princes or heads over thousands. Because these laws, some depict millennial realities, but starting with Israel as the elect plant, therefore you recognize that princes who come first because of the work of Jesus Christ on the 14th day, these princes also called heads of thousands are hinted at in blowing of trumpets. Blowing essentially signifies to master or to call. And when God speaks of calling a congregation, it was figurative that calling also called gathering. The same gathering that Jesus Christ wished to do to Israel, but they would let him. So as you see, it wasn't physical gathering because he was speaking to those who are already in Israel. So he meant indoctrination unto the ways of righteousness, which is the righteousness of God. That is why blowing was also said to be done over the sacrifices and offerings. But Israel doing these things with their minds closed, they thought and still think today, even among Christians, that it was all about blessings of crops and husbandry. Whereas in reality, these rituals were of phenomenally vast implications for all creations of God to be renewed in the heavens or in the earth. Therefore, things, both the life and the death, if practiced properly or incorrectly, because they meant unique things which could not be changed in the divine mysteries of God's creation.